Hi there, today's video will include a little bit of VBA and it is all about match performance analysis. Now this weekend I'm heading to a conference in Las Vegas. The conference is all about a piece of software called Sports Code. And what this software does is as you are watching a match and video recording it, you are also placing a timestamp on that video footage when a particular thing happens, such as a goal, a shot, a tackle, an error, for example. Now, the process of, of putting those stamps on there is one thing. That, that particular software obviously does all sorts of other complicated things after that point. But the concept of putting a timestamp on an event is really what I, have a, what I want to have a look at right now. And so I've created a little spreadsheet that's got six different buttons for each team. So there's 12 buttons in total. And I've used soccer or football, depending on which part of the world you are from, as my example. So we've got six measures, a uh, defensive outlet where the defence is receiving the ball and bringing it forward, an attacking entry, a chance on goal, a shot, an attacking set piece such as a free kick or corner, or an error. So there's those particular measures for both teams. And basically what I want to be able to do is every time something happens, we are recording it. So we could say that in the first half we had 15 uh, errors and three shots and so on and so on. So what I want to do firstly is just start the match. So I'm just going to click the start time button. And so the game is now started. It is 1.22 p.m. 33 seconds, 58 milliseconds. So that's what those four numbers indicate. And now, every single time I hit one of these 12 buttons, it's going to reference the minute of the match that something occurs. For example, as you can see, I'm just hitting buttons. At will here. And so what we're finding is, uh, obviously, uh, a whole lot's happening in the first minute of the match, but throughout the game effectively we'll just get a timestamp that counts up how many times something has happened. So the process to, to do this there's some VBA which we'll look at in a second but before we go there I just want to look at the formulas that um, go into the, the, the calculation of these numbers and so cells F2 to H2 is where these formulas sit and the first cell F2 there's nothing flash here mm. basically what's happening is regardless of which of these buttons is pressed the exact time at this point gets locked into cell F2 next to F2 is this big complicated formula what this formula is doing is, is much more simple than it appears. It's basically subtracting the time now, as shown in F2, from the time at the start of the game. So up in the formula bar, that's the time at the start of the game. And that's the time now. So it's essentially saying that there was 88.13 seconds since now compared to the start of the game and that equals approximately 1.5 minutes now I was going to do another big formula to convert that into something such as 1 colon 30 meaning 1 minute 30 but I didn't think that that was necessary to get the point across for this video so we can sort of save our breath a bit on that one and just look at the VBA so Clicking buttons throughout the game will tell us at what minute different events occurred and it will help us calculate total stats and some very simple things. So um, let's have a look at the VBA and see what's going on. I'll just hit Alt F11. That opens the VBA window. Now I was just looking at it before so it popped up like this. And I've got all my code in one module. So if you're not familiar with VBA, I'll just show you for a second. I'll view the Project Explorer. 
So here's the workbook that's open at the moment, it's called EAF41. I can click up the top and go insert module, adds another module, and I could write some code or paste some code in that I'd got from Google or something like that. So all my code's in module 1, so let's just go back there. I'm just going to X out of that Explorer window so we've got a little bit more ability to see what we're doing. And the first one I want to look at is just the start time. So if I hit this button called start time, it runs this little piece of code here. And basically what it's saying is go to cell B2, put the time in this particular format, hours, minutes, seconds, and an extra little bit I had to write to uh, put milliseconds in. Probably not that relevant now. Um, hours, minutes, and seconds could be just fine. And then I wanted to copy and then paste special values over the top just so it's a number that doesn't uh, change. Now, times can be volatile, and what volatile means is that if you save or close the file, when you reopen it, all of those values will recalculate. So if you saved, uh, uh, if you hit a, hit a button and it saved a time such as 127, when you reopen it at 2.30, all those times will update to 2.30 and you would have lost everything. So uh, I have learnt from mistakes that way. And so that's what this part here is doing. Once you put the value in, paste special values over the top of it. And it all happens in a split second so you don't notice that that's happening. So every time I hit the start button, that start time will be put in there. Now in a game of football I'd do that at the beginning of each quarter or half. Now all of the 12 code buttons that you see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, have an almost identical piece of code. I've put them all separately, code 1, code 2, code 3, because that's simpler, but the code basically does same process with a very slight variation. So let's just look at it for code 1. So this is column B. So in F2 it puts the exact time with, that I hit the button. Formulas then calculate elapsed seconds and then elapsed minutes. Then H2 which has got the little uh, dancing ants as some people call it around the outside of the cell at the moment. That gets copied into the first available cell in column B. So if I hit um, 1, what we'll find is that a new value gets pasted in cell B13. And so on. So what the code is actually doing is selecting cell 100 using the keyboard shortcut control up arrow and what that does is it goes up and finds the first uh, cell with any data in it and then down one and that's the first blank row. So back to the code and we'll see this line here goes to uh, row 100 then control up arrow and then an offset of one row down and so that's a very useful piece of code that I use all the time paste values and then that's it so all the way through that same task is happening now what I want to do is I'll just clear some cells out I want to record a little bit of code to show you how easy it can be to get started with VBA now what I want to record is that at the end of the first half I want to copy these cells and paste them here. And so let's do that. Click up the top, record macro. Excuse my typing, copy first half is what I'll call it. And I want to store it inside this workbook. So there's a couple of options in this drop down box and you can get a bit uh, messed up if you don't uh, know where you're saving it. I want to save it into this work workbook. So it's now recording, so everything I do is going to replay. So select those cells, copy, select these cells, paste special 
values. Okay. Save. And I'm just going to select cell A6. Now what I'm going to do is either stop the button, uh, stop the macro recording here, or up on the developer tab, there's also stop recording. And now I want to go into the code and see what we just did. I just want to bring up the Project Explorer. Let's see where it added it. Okay, there it goes. So this is what it created for us. Range B7 to M7 select. Selection, paste special values, and then workbox save, and then A6 select. So, as you can see, B to M7 copy, B8 to M8 select, paste special values, save, select a new cell, and that's it. So what I want to do is, in the developer tab, I can insert a little button and draw it just here a list of macros that I've got will appear so I select the one that I want and now if I just clear that out let's see what happens if I hit the button again Perfect. Add a little bit more to it and see if it updates. Great. So there we are. We've just written a little piece of code. And what I want to also do is just edit that for the second half. So rather than record it again, I want to show you how easy it can be to edit VBA. So I'll simply change the name of this. Now you can't have any spaces in the name of a macro, so occasionally you'll get an error if you try and do that. Now the only thing that I really have to edit here, and there's only one thing, is that I have to change this to B9 to M9. That's it. Nothing else needs doing. Close that, add a new button, find the macro that I want to attach to it, copy second half, right click on it and edit the text. And we should be good. Brilliant. Few more codes added. First half, second half. Fantastic. So we've just done a little bit of um, VBA. I'd probably add a third one. Why don't I do that now? I'll record it again. Little beginner's mistake there. Had a space in the name. So clear all. We'll Clear that. Clear that. And that's it. So clear all's at the top. So at the end of the first half, once you've pasted the, the stats in, clear it all out, a new start time, put some new codes in there, and start afresh. So there we are, a little bit more VBA, some match analysis tips and a nice simple way if you were trying to code your local 13 year old son's soccer game 
or um, something similar. Come back again next time. I promise not to take so long before making a new video. See you later.